Hello, Sonder fam. Welcome to our awesome Sonder social. I'm so excited. It's a journal prompt social. These are like my favorite. <laughs> my name is Bailey and I will be your facilitator this evening. I am dialing in from Hendersonville, Tennessee, which is just north of the Nashville area. Um, so not too, too far from the main city hub down there, just up in the suburbs. But yeah, I love the journal prompt socials. When I was first getting started with Silk and Sonder, the thing that really kept me coming back month after month were the like monthly trackers, like the mood tracker and the habit tracker and all of the journal prompt pages. So I always love it when I get to do one of these socials. Um, if you haven't already, make sure that you change the little blue chat box where you type to everyone. Sometimes it will like default to host and panelist. And if it does that, not everybody will be able to see what you have to say. And we want you to be able to um, share and spend time together because that's one of the best parts about socials is that we get to all kind of hang out with each other. Um, and so you want to make sure that you're able to kind of have that community time. So make sure that it is set to everyone. If this is your first social or your first social in a while or, you know, first journal prompt social, welcome. You will notice that um, you don't have to worry about if your camera's on or if you're muted or not or anything like that. You can settle in and just get cozy. I'll be the only one actually on camera today. Um, so that chat is the way that you will communicate with your fellow Sondra fam. And as we move through tonight, we'll have some examples up on the screen of what we're looking at. But obviously, with the journal prompts and things, we will also really be taking time to just kind of dive in and, and pick these things apart together. Um, but if you do see something up on the screen and you want to snap a photo or anything, you're more than welcome to take a screenshot, whatever works for you. Um, feel free to take photos of your pages at the end if you feel comfortable to and share in um, Sonder Club or on Instagram, TikTok, feel free to tag us. We always love to see your pages. Um, this is going to be a super fun one. Um, so I'm excited. Real quick before we get started, let me go over our community guidelines here. So first and foremost, please be kind and courteous to yourself and to others. No promotions or spam, please. We are going to respect everyone's privacy here. Sorry, I'm going to move this little desk down just a little bit. It's a little bit too tall for me. Um, no hate speech or bullying. Uh, limit repetitive product and accessory questions. We don't mind some chatter around like favorite pens and stickers and things like that. Obviously, we're we're here for it. Um, but we want to make sure that you have enough time to actually get into these pages and prompts and the bingo and all the good stuff. Um, and then anything that myself or the amazing Kate Gideon, who is also here with us tonight, helping out in the chat, um, anything that she or I cannot answer for you, we will direct you over to the HQ team at hello at silkandsonder.com. Um, they are a small but mighty team and they do work Monday through Friday. So give them a little bit of grace and they will get back to you as soon as they can. And then finally, Sonder Socials are a tool to help elevate your emotional health through the power of community, but you are responsible for your own emotions, well-being, and decisions. So this is important in every social that we do. But especially when we have a social that contains journal prompts, if you start to peel back a layer and you start to get into some of what I like to call the crunchy feelings, right? Um, sometimes crunch is good. Sometimes it adds like a little something to a dish, right? Like it spices things up for us and it's unexpected, but it's good. Uh, but sometimes crunchy is like stepping on a Lego with your bare foot. And it feels awful and it's terrible and it's sudden and nobody wants that, right? Um, so if you start to feel back a layer and those crunchy feelings start to come up and it doesn't feel like the good kind of crunchy where you're having aha moments and you're like working through something, take a break, take a breath. You do not have to tackle or dive into anything tonight that you're not ready to dive in or tackle just because it happens to come up. We are always going to be uh, participate at your own comfort here. And likewise, that means if you want to hang out and share in the chat, we definitely encourage that. We love that. But also, if you just need this time to be just for you, just yourself in your journal, we fully support that as well. Definitely take whatever it is you need from this time that you've carved out for yourself this evening. So speaking of this evening, this is our agenda. We are going to complete an opening activity together. It's a super cute one. And then we're going to dive into the journal prompts. And some of these are kind of deep. 
So I, I know I had a little bit of a tough time filling out some of these. So it's okay. We're going to get through it together. And then we're going to go back to fun stuff and finish with our create your own bingo board. So we'll have fun and then we'll get deep and then we'll come out and we'll finish with more fun, which is always my favorite kind of sandwich. So our new theme for this month is opportunity. So it's October and it's opportunity. I love the alliteration. Um, an opportunity means a lot of different things, but I think often the thing that we think about with opportunity, our brain tends to go towards like big things. We think about, you know, changes in career, changes in life path, like big seasonal life changes, right? Like if you are getting ready for a big move, if like you have been spending a lot of time raising kiddos and now suddenly it's an empty nest or you're looking at retirement or the opposite, like you're starting a big career or like you're starting a family or maybe you're finally deciding that neither of those type of paths actually fit you, right? And you're kind of figuring out what a path for you looks like. We think about these big shifts and changes. Um, but opportunity is also in the small things. And we'll talk a little bit about this in more detail once we get into our journal prompts. But, you know, we have the definition of opportunity um, on page, I believe it's three in our journal. Let me look, <laughs> I can flip to it, find out. Yes, it is page three. And the definition of opportunity is just a set of circumstances that makes it possible to do something. So as we're moving through tonight, I want you to keep that definition in mind because just because a set of circumstances makes it possible to do something doesn't mean you have to do it. Opportunity is really an invitation. And there's a lot of quotes up on the screen and hopefully some of them resonate with you. But if not, whatever opportunity means to you is more than fine. Um, I really like the one that says your potential to succeed is infinite. And I think that really goes well with this definition when we think about it, because it's an invitation to explore something or an invitation to change something or do something or set out on a different way. But sometimes the steps towards those changes are very small. And it starts with really tiny intentional moves. And we don't even notice that we're creating an opportunity for ourselves until we actually hit the goal. So as you're moving through this month, try to do your best to pay attention to all the opportunities, big and small, and don't overcomplicate it. <laughs> Remember, it's just a set of circumstances that makes it possible to do something. So let's go ahead and dive into our opening activity. So for this one, it's not gonna be in the journal anywhere. This is exclusive to our social this evening. So you're going to want to flip to a blank page or space in your journal. And we're going to start off with a little bit of like a visualization exercise here. So we're going to imagine opportunity as a rare luminescent butterfly that lands on your shoulder. I love that imagery. And we're going to think of that luminescent butterfly and about its appearance in vivid detail this opportunity butterfly. Its colors, its patterns, the way its wings shimmer. And then once you've visualized your butterfly, you're gonna draw an outline of the butterfly on the page in your journal. And then inside the wings, we want you to use words or small sketches. You could do stickers if you want to. Um, anything that speaks to you that represents the opportunities it brings. And then it says to also color the butterfly to capture its luminescence. Now, another option I will offer here is sometimes, especially when you do a visualization exercise like this, I think it can be hard to find the right words, but you know what it feels like to you when you're visualizing something. So if you need to just focus on the colors more so than physical words that describe opportunity, that is totally fine. Um, likewise, if you are more of a single pen to paper kind of person and you don't want to get out all of your coloring things and that doesn't speak to you, that is totally fine as well. You could just draw the outline and just put the words inside of it. If you decided that you wanted to do a pattern, but not necessarily colors, you can always draw little designs within your butterfly. There is no right or wrong way to do this exercise, right? So I'm going to read the prompt one more time because we do have this visualization element. 
Imagine opportunity as a rare luminescent butterfly that lands on your shoulder. Think about its appearance in vivid detail, its colors, patterns, and the way its wings shimmer. Draw the outline of the butterfly on a page of your journal and inside the wings use words or small sketches to represent the opportunities it brings. Color the butterfly to capture its luminescence. So this is the butterfly that I ended up with here and I found these cute little butterfly quotes that I think are totally perfect for our theme of opportunity, right? Trust the timing of your life. And just when the caterpillar thought the world was over, it became a butterfly. And you don't just wake up and become the butterfly. Growth is process. All of those very much speak to opportunity to me. So I think that the butterfly activity is perfect for our theme. Um, and I had fun kind of like coloring it in and thinking about the shimmery, like luminescent to me feels very like it said luminescent, but I think my brain went iridescent. <laughs> so I was thinking about like color shifty changes when I imagined my butterfly. And then I have kind of like the opportunities I think or that I'm hoping that is bringing why landing on my shoulder. So I will flip back and forth between these pages for you. Take a moment to participate in this opening activity. Share with us in the chat what your butterfly looks like, what colors you're using, what colors you're seeing. Um, what you're writing inside of the wings. If you're using stickers, let us know how you're completing this. And then we'll move on to our journal prompt.
Thank you all for spending some time with our opening activity. If you are still working on your butterfly, don't worry. You may have some other opportunities to continue working on it. No pun intended. <laughs> As we move through our other activities. But I do want to make sure we have enough time. So we are going to flip over to page 14 in our journals. We are going to be looking at these opportunity journal prompts. And we're going to take these one at a time. So flip on over to page 14, and we're going to start at the top with the first prompt here. It says, describe a time when you created an opportunity for yourself. What was it and what did you learn? So remember, on every single one of these pages, I'm going to have the definition of opportunity up there as a reminder. Opportunity is just a set of circumstances that makes it possible to do something. And then I liked these little quotes. I thought that they went well with this. It's through curiosity and looking at opportunities in new ways that we've always mapped our path. And every problem is an opportunity in disguise. So I decided to write about when I created an opportunity for myself at work um, by getting clear on what I wanted my career path to look like last year. Um, I thought I wanted to go <laughs> in a completely different direction than I've ended up. Um, but I did research. I job shadowed folks that were in those positions. Um, I talked to friends and coworkers, and I took some classes to finally realize that leadership was really what I wanted. Um, I kind of had thought, I don't know, I had been in some unfortunately toxic work environments previously that made me kind of feel like maybe leadership wasn't for me. And what I have since discovered is that I actually really enjoy leadership. I just don't want to be in leadership at a toxic company. <laughs> um, so once I got clear on that goal and kind of vocalized it to my own leadership, um, they actually worked to kind of create a new entry level management role within our team that they had kind of hoped to have for a while, but they weren't sure if they had the right person or what it would look like because they didn't know that I would be interested in anything like that. So once they figured out, oh, oh, she wants to do something like this. Perfect. Right. Um, they kind of got right on it, thankfully. And so I interviewed and I got it and I've loved growing and building in this role. And since then, I've learned that, like, yeah, I enjoy leadership and I'm, you know, it it feels a, a little cocky to say, I guess. But so far, based on the feedback that I've gotten from my direct reports, um, I seem to be really good at it. And it's something that I thought maybe wasn't in the cards for me. And by just getting clear on what I wanted, it, you know, this opportunity presented itself. And I've been able to learn that that's not true, that this is a viable career path for me that I really want. So um, yeah, thank you, you all. Um, so yeah, sometimes it's just about starting at the beginning and figuring out what it is that you want. If you've ever had a goal that you've achieved, even a small one, even if it's just establishing routine, whatever steps you took to start that new routine or achieve that goal or make that kind of like change, it could be like a mindset shift even, that's you creating opportunity. Because again, opportunity it's just a set of circumstances that makes it possible to do something. So you do stuff like that for yourself every day. You just don't think about it. So I'll put on a little bit of music for you to think about this prompt. Let us know what's coming up for you if you're comfortable. And then we'll move into our next one here.
Thank you all for spending some time with us. If you're still working, don't panic. <laughs> keep working. Um, and please keep sharing in the chat because these are incredible opportunities that you all really made happen for yourself through like really big and really small steps. And just from taking a moment, Alice, I see, I see Alice just said, why can't I think of anything? Alice, this was actually hard for me too. I kind of had to go, I think I had to go in reverse. If I remember correctly, when I actually filled this out, I had to do like the bottom prompt first and then come back to the top one. Cause it took me a minute to kind of reframe what an opportunity was and how did I make it for myself? So maybe give it a little bit of time see if it comes to you. So our next prompt on the page here says, what makes an opportunity worth pursuing versus not? So again, opportunity, a set of circumstances that makes it possible to do something. So this kind of goes back to what we talked about at the beginning, right? Opportunity is essentially an invitation and you get to decide whether or not you want to take that invitation. Now, sometimes depending on what we're going through in life, there are like external or like personal even pressures that sometimes make us uh, feel pushed towards taking that invitation more so than others, right? Um, if you really need a job and then a job opportunity lands at your feet, right? Even if it's not perfect because you need a job, you may be more pushed to take that opportunity, even if it's not 100% correct. Um, you may be in a situation where it's like, you have to move, right? Like maybe the opportunity isn't in moving, but maybe it's moving to a place where there's a different climate. So you'll get to experience different seasons or different activities and you'll get to kind of be out in nature and those things in a different way, right? So sometimes not every piece of a change is the opportunity itself, um, but we do get to hopefully decide whether or not we take it. It's just sometimes there's a little bit more pressure than others. So what I thought about, was if the potential and the result aligns with your goals and values without requiring a sacrifice that causes harm, then I think it's worth it. Discomfort is okay, change is expected, adjustments may be required, but if it causes true harm to your mental, physical, or emotional health, more often than not, it's not the right opportunity for that time. So that's what I wrote. That's what I thought. Um, I found something that um, was talking about how you decide whether or not a networking opportunity is right for you. And it was funny because I thought the steps kind of aligned with how you make this decision in general. Like sometimes we need to research. Sometimes you need to consider the costs. Like again, that includes emotional cost, like cost to your mental health, time, finances, changes. Um, think about your overall goals and look for common connections to your goals and what this opportunity could bring. Like, is there alignment there? And then at the end of the day, sometimes you just gotta listen to your intuition. You gotta go with that gut, um, but make sure it's your gut and not your imposter syndrome telling you you can't do something, right? So I'll put on some music for you to think about this prompt. Please share with us in the chat if you feel comfortable and then we'll move into our next one.
you all did an awesome job with that one. Um, something that came up in the chat that I think it's important to kind of call attention to is that opportunity is one of those things that other people really like to weigh in on and they really like to tell you if they think that you're making the right choice or not, or if they think something is worth it. Don't ever let somebody else tell you that something, don't ever let anybody else tell you that a cost of something is worth it when they themselves do not have to pay the cost. Only you get to decide if it's worth it for you when you're the one paying the price. That's what I think. So we're gonna move down to the page to our last journal prompt here. And this is a tough one. It's describe a time when you missed an opportunity. Now, I'll be honest, the first place that my brain went to with this is not a tough place. <laughs> um, I could have bought like an entire Bitcoin back when nobody knew what they were because somehow my husband knew what they were. Um, and at the time they were like a hundred bucks for an entire coin, which at the time for me sounded like a lot of money for some made up thing. Um, so we didn't do it, but fast forward like 10 years later and then people were making boo of money off of just pieces of these things. And I mean, you know, I'm not a big fan of cryptocurrency, but was I kicking myself when that happened? Yes, yes, I was, because that would have been a nice little chunk of change if I had just listened to my husband about this nerdy little thing he wanted. Um, so that's the first place that my brain went to. Not so hard, just a little bit funny. I think in general, um, investment opportunities come a lot come up a lot when you think about this, right? If I could go back in time and invest in Google, right? Those kinds of things. Um, but on a more serious level, I also miss an opportunity to start a family at a time when I had the most flexibility in my career that I've ever had. Um, I My office is 10 minutes from my house and it's very like eight to five and there's lots of flexibility. And we had all work from home during COVID times and two days at home after for a while. And my husband was working at the same place for a while. And now all of that is changing. My husband no longer works there. Our office is moving downtown, so I'm getting a big commute. We only have one day a week that we work from home now. And so a lot of that built-in flexibility that I had is gone. And so if we had kind of started a family when we were originally thinking, I could have really taken advantage of that flexibility. And I know that for so many of my friends who are parents, that is crucial. So sometimes it feels like I made a little bit of a mistake or a misstep there by not taking that opportunity. But the truth is my mental health was not in a good place at that time. And it would have been a much greater loss, a much bigger mistake if I had tried to take myself down the road of motherhood um, at a point when I was not mentally healthy. And so instead, I took that time of flexibility to really focus on me and focus on my mental health and get it into a much better state and I'm really happy with where I'm at now. And so I'm really glad that things turned out the way that they did. But sometimes I do kind of wonder if I should have taken that time and should have taken the opportunity, right? It's that kind of little voice that's like, oh, you should have done this, even though logically I know that it's not true. So be a gentle with yourself on this one. I think that these quotes are a really good reminder um, nothing is more expensive than a missed opportunity is kind of the mindset that you hear about people talk about with missed opportunities a lot like oh you should always take the opportunity because there's nothing more expensive than a missed opportunity but I think these quotes at the bottom are really more where it's at don't be afraid of missing opportunities behind every failure is an opportunity somebody wishes that they had missed and life's missed opportunities at the end may seem more poignant to us than those we embraced because in our imagination they have a perfection that reality can never rival so we have a tendency to forlorn these missed opportunities, but oftentimes that's just us thinking about things that never happened and wondering what could have been. So as you explore this prompt, please be gentle with yourself, share in the chat what's coming up. I promise that you're probably not alone. Um, and then we'll move into our fun bingo board.
if you're still working on this, that is okay. Um, please continue to share. I'm seeing so many things in the chat that I know that um, are resonating with me on one way or another. And I know that they're resonating with everyone here. Um, it's really amazing that we can kind of share and get vulnerable and get deep like this with one another because there's so much power and vulnerability. And one of the biggest things is that it shows us that we're not alone. We all have these things in our lives that we feel like maybe we missed out on or maybe passed us by. And sometimes we wonder what would have happened if we had taken that, right? But as you can see from all the incredible people that we have here, like all of us landed where we are now and we'll never know if maybe that opportunity could have landed us somewhere different that would have been better, but it also could have landed us somewhere different that isn't as good. And I think that Kay had a beautiful comment um, at the beginning where she said like on her vision board, um, she has make peace with your past so it won't disrupt your present. And I think that is a great perspective. So we're now going to take a breath. And we're going to wiggle back into some fun so that we can end on like a high note here. So we're going to flip over to page 21 and look at this create your own bingo. So it just says, have some fun with self-care this month, add activities or get inspiration from our opinion app and challenge yourself to get a row or a full house this month. So there is no suggestion. There are no rules. This is just bingo for you. Um, so for me, I kind of just thought about what my goals are. Obviously, they were kind of like front of mind after doing those opportunity prompts. So I kind of made some activities and stuff centered around that, around trying to like eat the rainbow a little more, trying to get more, you know, active, um, leaning into spooky season because I'm really feeling the fall vibes this year in a way I haven't in a while. Um, also, some good like housekeeping things for the home because I hate to do them, but I feel so much better when they're done. And then, um, yeah, just some stuff for me and focusing in on um, the journal and some other things like writing down an affirmation, completing the Wheel of Life page, uh, work on the coloring page, that kind of thing. And then these little white squares are bingos that I pulled out of our app. So there is some stuff for inspiration there, um, along with some stuff from previous socials um, of other bingos and other um, activity suggestions. And then we also have some fun examples. This is an old, another old bingo of mine from a previous time. But I also have some fun examples from the Sonder Club. I love this little pumpkin. Maybe you want to do little pumpkin bingos. So cute. Um, and I think the one on the right might be Malika's because it looks like her handwriting. She has like the cutest, most neat, tidy um, handwriting. And then some more really fun examples from Sonder Club. So whoop. One, two, four. <laughs> so I will put on some fun music for you to set up your bingo. Please share with us in the chat what you're doing here, if you're picking a theme, um, what you're focusing on, and uh, yeah, have fun.
Well, as always, it's hard to believe, but an hour has gone past and we are now at the end of our time together. I would love to see your butterflies, your bingos, and your journal prompts if you feel comfortable sharing in Sonder Club. Um, it is always so cool to see what you all share here in the chat and then also see it like come to life on your pages. Uh, we are still doing our refer a friend program. If you give somebody uh, or refer somebody to Silk and Saunders, they get $10 off. You get $10 off and then you can come to socials together. Um, if you're not already an annual subscriber, something to consider, especially heading into the holiday season just around the corner. It can definitely save you some cash in the long run. Um, you'll get a link to your email with a survey to tell us what you think, or you can do it right now with the QR code or with the um, links Katie is putting in the chat please do let us know what you think. Katie's also going to share the link to our YouTube page. The recording of this social should be up in a few days, um, along with most of our other ones. If you ever can't make a social, need to go back and listen, something had to leave early, it will be there for you within a few days of the event. And then I will share the playlist in the chat there. As always, it was our immense pleasure to spend this time here with you tonight. It's always some of my favorite parts of the week. Um, so until next time, we'll see you all in Sonder Club and be good to each other.